Welcome to the Songwriter Connection Podcast, where we look at the craft of songwriting through the eyes of the songwriter. Each week, we make a connection with a music maker, listen to their songs, and hear their stories. From Nashville, Tennessee, here's your host, Dave Lenahan. I remember I, I, I might have told you in the last episode that we had a visitor from uh, South Africa that came into Nashville and we were showing him around. And he's a big listener. To the, he's never missed an episode. And this is episode 105, by the way. And his name is Sean Casey. And Sean says, Dave, I, I, I can prove I listen to all your shows. He goes, I know you hate genres. And I go, well, yeah, <laughs> you, you, listen, you listen up pretty well and I appreciate that. And I do because I just think it's wrong to put talent into this little box and say, you're folk your country, your, you know, what do you want to, you know, and I've been preaching and get on that soapbox. I know, but I've been saying, be you, be, be who you are. And if you don't know who that is, find out uh, and create your own genre. And as I've said in the past, we've had um, uh, folk and roll from Jamie Harris. We've had sunshine pop, story pop from uh, Olivia Francis and, and many, many others. And these guys today uh, are the embodiment of that. Uh, they have created their own genre. I mean, you could probably call, it's been called mountain rock, you yeah. know, right? Yep. This They're just off the Grand Old Opry last night. We're taping this in April, on April 30th. Welcome the Davison Brothers. We, Thank you. Thank we, you for having us, Steve. <laughs> as we're looking, uh, Donnie's right across from me, Chris to the right playing guitar, and we've got uh, Nephew uh, Jared on the on the bass that we yep. plug in through the board. So we've got some really cool sound. And we're going to get a few songs around this dining room table. And we're going to tell you all about the Davison Brothers. And man, let me tell you, you're going to love this stuff. they got a brand new album out called Home is Where the Heart Is. And I'm going to start with a song. This the, It's just called Home. This is the latest single, right? Uh, and yep. We'll talk about it afterwards. Davison Brothers on the Songwriter Connection Podcast. Chase the lights, we drink and stay high as kites. Old back roads, country nights, we dream about city life. Leaving that old holler behind. We made our plans, took the time, lift our roots. There in the ground, drifted out above our raisin. Got kicked around, but we never caved. We made our way to where we were going. Did it our own way without ever knowing. Every mound, every road. Everywhere we go would bring us home.
that's just awesome music. <laughs> oh, thank you, 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 yeah, man. you know, that, people ask you what kind of music you like. Like great music. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that just, that's the music from back home on the porch, man. Yeah. That's how we grew up. The whole family singing like it. That's actually a lot of our family singing all that big choir. It is, isn't the, it? The yeah. chorus behind on all that harmony there. It, and, the, and that's what I was going to ask you. We got we got Donnie and we got Chris and uh, you, you've got nephew Jared. It is a family thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, uh, Jared on the bass over there. He's a nephew. Yeah, he's a nephew. One of the newest members of the band, right? Yep. If I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we got his brother. Just uh, He's become like the fifth member, uh, Landon McFadden, which he just did the Opry with us last night wow. as well. Then Donnie's boy, Nick Davison, comes out when he's not touring and gets on stage with us. Then we got another nephew, Andrew Davison, which was singing on that as <laughs> wow. well. The whole and, family. And, and didn't your dad, dad yeah, yeah, your dad yeah. sang yeah. a couple songs, didn't That's he? That's kind of how it was with dad and us, my brother yeah. and I. Like He waited till we got old enough to get out of school and get out on the road and do it and that's kind of what we've done with these boys the next generation yeah, it's yeah. kind of like he was a touring the, musician too he the kept... David Davidson school yeah man so and he still keeps of... busy doesn't yeah, he yeah, dad, yeah. dad's still out getting it man he's, yeah. uh, he's a wonderful entertainer great guitar player and singer and just he awesome. just he's been our hero man. has he he's, yeah he's, oh it should be he's the best and will always be the best to yeah. us man well, let's talk about home. Uh, home is uh, Clarksburg, West Virginia. Yep. Correct? Yeah. Yep. The beautiful and, mountains of West Virginia. Yeah, Appalachian uh, mountains. <laughs> and, uh, and and that's, you guys aren't based in Nashville, but you come a lot because you gotta, you have, you've got to have a, a place to, to yeah. record and, and, and play. And uh, But home is there, right? Yep. Yep. And you're true yep. to your roots. Yep. We, uh, like you said, we're based in Nashville, but... We've never been able to make the jump. Our family founded the town we live in back in the 1700s. Major Daniel Davison, him and his uh, brothers, he was uh, awarded 400 acres in Harrison County, Virginia at the time before the state was West Virginia. And they wagoned down and uh, cleared out the land and wasn't a state then, is what you're saying? Was yeah, it yeah, state? wasn't no, it a state. Wasn't, we were still wow. Virginia. We're still I think Virginia. It, was, it was like 1863 mm. when Virginia and West wow. Virginia separated and became two states. But oh man, he was. But, they were awarded that property. I think they were him and his brother were Revolutionary War heroes. And, and in the day, wow. that's what they did. They give you land like that, so they come down and. Settled, settled in our little, what we call now Clarksburg, West Virginia, our hometown. He went on to build uh, uh, like a saloon and a bed and breakfast. Then he sold lamp oil to the and cut all the roads through West Virginia. And he wow. obtained about 40,000 acres. We've still got one of the family farms that's left out all that. We ended up getting it back in like the 1940s. My grandfather bought it, but just happened to be right across from the property. We got our whole families buried since the 1700s. And wow. Pretty wild. So. It is. It's a great story. And they were all mountain fiddlers. They were, they, were, they were fiddlers. Like my grandfather and grandmother. My grandmother played piano and a little bit of guitar. And, but our dad and that generation, dad and Uncle Pete and th- their generation, they were kind of like the... The first Davisons to start playing guitars and electric guitars and bass guitars and so it that. passes down to the generations. Yeah. and with each generation, a little something new is added, right? And it yeah, evolves. It's kind of right? it's kind of yeah. cool how it all just rolls down the line like yeah. that. And by the time it got to us, it was uh, that's kind of what we knew, like picking the guitars around the campfire. And there was always music on the Davison farm for as far back as I can remember as a wee little guy. Like That's what you did. On the weekends, everybody from town would come out to the farm and bring their guitars and fiddles and mandolins and banjos. And it was just, uh, it was music. It was Music has always been a huge part of the Davison life, and it still is today. Awesome. All these guys, Jared and Landon and Nick, all the young boys... They've been out with us since they were big enough to put guitars on and mandolins up. But they all started with little mandolins because they're a lot smaller than a guitar. And then, then they kind of evolved into the acoustic guitar and then the electric guitar. And then, But it's just, it's great, man, to be able to get out there and run up and down the road like that with, with your bet. family. And your, yeah. it's, it's just, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I'll, I'll bet. I'll bet. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to just be a bug on the wall. <laughs> Anytime, man. You know, Anytime. <laughs> As long as I didn't get swatted. <laughs> Jared, was that your first uh, trip to the Opry last night? They played the Grand Old Opry last night, you guys. Yeah, it was. Well, what did you think? Yeah, it was my first I know you don't have a microphone over there, but... Uh, it, it was surreal. Surreal. <laughs> it, it would have to be surreal. Now, you guys, Chris... Uh, Chris I looked over and Jared was smiling bigger than anybody. Oh, I'll bet. I'll bet. Yeah. So you step in that circle. What's it like? Oh, man. That was our second time. We've only yeah. been there one time before. Uh, that was, was back before COVID, BC, yeah, back in the day. Yeah, uh, we toured a lot with a good friend of ours, Chris Jansen. You know, I was going to ask you about Chris because I saw the video of that, and he brought you guys out. Yeah, that's how we made our debut, and it was just a very special night. But 
I mean, I was a nervous wreck. I'm not going to We don't get nervous usually. We do this every day, but yeah. there's something there's oh. something about stepping on that stage and stepping in that circle, man. I, it's like, I know. it's a magical moment. It's one of those things where you don't, I kind of got a lump in my throat. I'm oh, so man. happy. I, I don't know if I'm going to cry, if I'm going to laugh. If I'm, but after about 20 seconds, the both times we've done it, about 20 seconds into that first song, man, you just feel all that come off of you. It's just mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody at the Opry said they're they're they love it, man. They're just yeah. they're there for the music, and I don't know. It's just you relate good with them, and yeah. And and you last too. last night it was like the it was just a full house of West Virginia. I was going to say there, as soon as you soon had as a lot you of say friends. something, or they announce you from West Virginia. I mean, it kind of just yeah. takes the edge off because you don't realize how many mountaineers are sitting out there. Oh yeah. Just like, ah. <laughs> and, but I don't know, man. There is something. It's almost like all those. As a kid growing up, I mean, you dream of being that we we've been right. to the Grand. I think the first time I went to the Grand Ole Opry, I was twelve years old, and it was all the legends, man. And yeah. we got to do the tour. Was that the new? And, was it still the new Opry then, or was yeah. it back at Ryman? Okay. Yeah, and uh, and it was like uh, when you walk out there, man. It's like you start thinking about all that, man. Just mm-hmm. I can remember when I was a kid, like man, and now I'm standing yeah. out here. Right. It's almost like all those ghosts in there, and that, <laughs> that magic at the same time. And you really don't. I can't describe the feeling. It's just, well, it's totally awesome, like, to just stand out there and The only and thing I can bear to it is I, I used to work at Ryman Auditorium. Oh, man. And, and I was the kind of nerd that would walk in and just the hair on the back of my head. I mean, to, and I worked there for a couple of years. It never got old. Yeah. And you go up there, and the first part of that stage is the original Grand Ole Opry stage. It's a light and blonde wood, and I'm the kind of guy that walk up there and, you know, touch it, rub it. <laughs> A little uh, mojo on maybe there. Maybe Hank was on that little... <laughs> yeah, exactly, man, exactly. And you think about that, but a lot of those guys that did it regularly like that, they still say the same thing. That does that to them, too, every yeah. time. They get cold chills. They get nervous. Like it's it's. There's something about that, man. But it's, you have a lot of help. Garth used to say, a lot of help behind you, uh, uh, all yeah, the ghosts to bash. Exactly, you know? man. <laughs> That's the way I look at it, too. I'm like, man, you guys and girls all with me tonight back there? I hope you're on my team tonight, man. Let's go. Don't mess up out you here on bet. the Aubrey. You bet. Don't trip or nothing. I like to dance a lot and boogie while I'm out there. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor, man. It's yeah, a special, I just special moment. Yeah. yeah, second time out, and uh, it won't be the last, I'm sure. Let's talk about this album. The company you keep is absolutely amazing. Uh, we talk about our, our, our hate for genres, and you really have created your own. Uh, but the company you keep is absolutely amazing. Kings of um, of Americana music, icons like Tim O'Brien and, and Rob McCurry, Charlie McCurry's, uh, Stuart Duncan, Leftover Salmon's Vince uh, Herman, who you jammed with last night, right? Yeah. You're saying? Um, Ronnie Bowman, Kyle Tuttle, and you know, look at the producers, uh, Brett Cobb, who's an amazing producer here in Nashville, but also a pretty, pretty darn good artist. Oh, he's, man. Uh, One of the, he's the, amazing. The best. That, guy, yeah. that guy's not even real, man. He's he really just writing and oh. just. Just oh, that song he Black thinks. Crow he does. Yeah. Oh, man. And then I come across this other name, David Ferg Ferguson. <laughs> yeah. That's Johnny Cash's dude, oh, right? Fergie, yeah. man. That, that's our buddy right there. That's 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 the character. He, he worked with Rick Rubin on all the Americana Series records, which were my favorite Cash records. Yep. Huge Cash fans. You guys? He, I, he told us one time he did 60 different recordings on Johnny Cash, 60 different sessions. Wow. That's amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> he filmed a lot of that early footage you see too when he was just a kid his job was to run around with them with them back then you know just a regular video camera was mm-hmm. huge and yeah. his job was the to carry that camera around and get all the footage he could of johnny wherever he was at so wow he got an early experience it's it, the story is amazing if you hear him tell about how he met cowboy jack and oh, he wow. snuck into the studio and without Cowboy, Cowboy Jack was out of town and he recorded some band and nobody knew it then Cowboy Jack heard it and asked who was in the control room and recorded that and he thought he was going to get in trouble and he's like I they, think you got something going on yeah, here let's make you a producer it. they ended up loving like what he was doing but but Fergie, wow. Fergie is uh, that guy is just a great spirit to be around man like, like the music the music's just a bonus with that guy man he, sure. he's so wonderful and just and the, and his style and everything, man. He's like, just get that, get there. You boys just get the jam. And I, I couldn't even tell half the time when he was recording and what it I'll was. I'll figure it out. Like, you guys just jam. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's like, 
That's like what what was so much. It was the funnest. This last record, Homeless World Party, has been. It was so much fun making that record and having all of our friends in there. Like, and I want to hear all the stories. I want to hear all of that, but I also want to hear his song. And I have to tell you, Donnie comes in. He right right away brings out his his Gibson guitar, nineteen sixty one. That's a beautiful yeah. guitar. Yeah. And he's just jamming right away and singing. You know, I got a feeling you just never stop, right? Well, I'm just trying to blow the cobwebs out from last night, man. <laughs> Can you guys do one for us? Yeah. yeah we'll Live around our Duncan Fife dining room table, every much bit of part of the show is uh, as, as we all are. So, we'll do Davis one, and Brothers. We'll do one off the new record here. Uh, this one's called Appalachian Breeze. Oh, you love it. Cold concrete and busy streets making me feel low. It's an empty gray that eats away the fire in my soul. Paul's ground, place that I call home. I want to hum along to an old time song, roll my pants up to my knees. Wet a line, free my mind in a cold mountain stream.
That is beautiful. I am so there, guys. I really am. Davis and Brothers, the Songwriter Connection podcast. I see a Vince had a co-write on that song, huh? Yep. Yeah. Like yeah, man. Song. You know, that, I really love this story about how you guys wrote this record. And, and since it's the Songwriter Connection podcast, I want to I want to go in that direction next. Um, I love going on songwriter retreats. one of my favorite things to do. We get a bunch of guys and we hang out. Yeah, we're in that, a cabin that's, somewhere. That's, and that's, that's what you did, right? Area. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of... Yeah. My brother Chris set that up, man. That, yeah. Uh, Went to South Carolina? Yeah, we yeah. did. Uh, we found a lodge... I, I knew uh, the songwriters in this community, I knew there were some things that, you know, that they do a lot here. And the, the element here is, you know, they do a lot of the same thing every day, go in these writing oh, yeah. rooms. And it yep. just it gets to be a job, you know, mm-hmm. for them. They make the most that they can of it here in some of these rooms. And some of them you feel like, you know, they've got the vibe set up where it's really cool. But... These jam band friends of ours and Americana artists, uh, they were, Vince Herman had never done a co-write before. And really? He'd come to West Virginia during COVID when the everybody was locked down and he pulled a motor home up on a camp we got on a trout stream and he was there about three days and I called him, I said, you wore out up there yet? <laughs> Fishing and all that. And he said, yeah, man, come up. So I come up and seen him. We got to talk and I said, Man, you want to go to Nashville and and do some writing and get out of the, this area here a little bit? And he didn't ever tell me that he'd not done a co-write. He said, "Yeah, man, I've always wanted to do that. I've heard about how that stuff works down in Nashville." And <laughs> so we jumped in a vehicle and met him down here. And he got out with us, and we was uh, I put together Levi Lowry and Sierra Farrell, which is a West Virginia artist that's doing really good things right now. And uh, we booked a studio, Donnie and I, and we brought Rob McCurry. And it was just wow. like a little loft studio. And we was going up the step, and he said, man, I don't know if I told you, but I've never done a co-write before. <laughs> so that day we wrote seven songs. Are you kidding me? And that man, Appalachian breeze. Rolling, man. <laughs> and that was, was one of them. Yeah, yeah, we was packing up our guitars, and I saw Levi Lowry. He had his uh, great-great-grandfather's old fiddle. Mm. His uh, great 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 grandfather was a Southern Georgia fiddler. I think he was in the Skillet Liquors. Was the, some of the first early recordings yeah, from the nineteen twenties. That's awesome. And he had that fiddle. That's before the devil went down here, right? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I saw him over thinking he wasn't putting that fiddle away, and I was like, "Man, you got one more in?" He's like, "Yeah, we might not want to leave." And I said, "Don't pack him guitars up." And we'd been in there hammering for hours and hours. And I said, "Hit something on that fiddle." And, he just shoved out that melody right there, the Appalachian breeze. Really, we wrote the lyrics around that. So it started like, with a violin, yeah, with, with a fiddle. Yeah, that fiddle just put us in that Appala- that that melody right there, man. Sometimes that's all it takes. And, it was and like, now we've been doing that. I've been coming in and bringing a banjo player because you know a banjo's got a different little technique and a roll to it. Yeah, and it gets us away from these guitars. You kind of get tied in a writing room to a guitar strumming or something, and if you you know we've been really liking the starting with a fiddle or you just get a melody going and it takes you out of your box and gets you somewhere new that is a beautiful melody and there's yep. something for the songwriter to learn in that you know we talk about to get out of a rut sometimes you put you do an open tuning or something well, yep. how about a different instrument you know i, I, yeah. I write with a girl who's a great uh banjo player next time we write guess what yep. yeah yeah exactly. hey, hey, so, yeah, michelle bring some, out that banjo you yeah, know and a piano some, does a lot a piano of too i like writing with yeah. piano players yeah that's that's kind of <clears> how i think that uh just just the difference like a banjo lick or that little fiddle lick or something man you know the yeah. fiddlers have their own little style like that it's hey, it just some little thing to take you off the path a little bit like that but yeah. you go with it like outside that. of dots is but say, back know, to play. that we uh after that day that was here in nashville i was like man this works so well i called our managers which is herb woolsey and by the way yeah if you don't know that name folks, <laughs> google he, he manages this uh there's this guy uh you may have heard of named george Strait. <laughs> not to drop bob yeah. dylan tells me never to drop names but yeah, yeah in the george uh, in the case of george we'll drop it yeah yeah no uh Irv, and he's got Alan Mitchell over helping yeah. run the company, but they're just amazing. Irv, like a, you know, he's a second dad to us. He he come out to the Opry last night, and just wow. a gentleman, and just 
old school like it, you just feel like you're you're hanging with an old cowboy or something mm-hmm. you've seen it on the movies right. your whole life he's the real deal not very many of them old cowboys left no mm-hmm. there's yeah. one of them he's buddy. one of them yeah. huh? but I told him I was like man this works so well and I knew I was just touching the tip of the iceberg on this and so and you know the the next I said I called him I said we got to do this and do do it in a big way and so we booked uh I got the jam band the bluegrass or Americana guys I called Kyle Tuttle which is mm. you know national banjo champ and <laughs> phenomenal yeah. phenomenal and I called uh, Vince Herman again and Leftover then I yep, yep from Leftover Salmon and then I called uh the, some of my closest friends writers that I knew that would get this and one of them was Wyatt Durrett which Wyatt don't write with any instrument he can't play an instrument and it's amazing he's got like 13 number one hits or something and uh, wow. 20 top tens and just but he's an all melody lyricist guy he can't play a guitar he can't play a piano nothing and he just runs around with songs in his head he'll just come up to us and sing us a song and be like hey guys put some put some <laughs> chords behind it put a put a melody behind I, it like yeah, I, man, love it that. I love but that I love that he I knew he would get this and uh, then I called Rob Snyder which we've been close Rob friends Snyder's with Rob. amazing yep. man love him <laughs> we helped bring <laughs> Rob to town years ago we we met Rob with the Jackass guys. Uh, Ryan Dunn and Rob were best friends in BAM and Johnny Knoxville and all of them. Mm-hmm. Rob from Westchester, Pennsylvania, where they filmed all that Jackass. And Ryan Dunn was in a uh, video, starring in a video with us before he passed. And we was up in Westchester filming with him and hanging, and he introduced us to Rob. But long story short, Rob ended up coming to Nashville and become huge successful yeah. songwriter down here but and i had channing wilson i called him then adam hood and uh we decided we was going to go to a 1200 acre lodge in south carolina and i was going to get the nashville guys out of nashville and get the jam bluegrass guys away from everything here in nashville i didn't know how it was going to go down we got there on a sunday i think we were supposed to leave on wednesday or something and the first night the fiddle and i mean the mandolin and the the banjos come out, and then I saw these writers just circle around it. Mm. Some of them had never been in a little bluegrass jam circle like that, and then it wasn't an hour later. Songs just started coming out of everybody, and we was doing little, we were separating everybody like two to the right, three to the right here in this room, and yeah. for three or four days we just did that. And we come out, I think twelve or fifteen songs there, and it was just such a great experience and just it, it was it made it so much fun we did that about three or four more times i brought it back to nashville and we did it here and that's how we got this record we had 50 some songs i was to gonna ask from. how many songs did you have to choose from <laughs> it right? was hard to choose yeah. to get to get down to 12 for this okay. record but well maybe another one come that was out. a whole, yeah. not, whole yeah. other thing a lot of those songs we were writing we were talking about home or like yeah. my brother was sending those songs and brent and fergie were like I don't know if you guys realize because you're caught up in it, but everything you guys are sending is about back home. You're wanting to get home, or you're missing mm-hmm. home, and and uh, and Brent was actually the one. He said, "Man, you guys gotta let me name this record." So my brother was like, "Well, yeah, man, go ahead." And he said, "Home is where the heart is." Sure. And, and if there is a title cut, it's the one you just played. <laughs> yeah. 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 And you know the thing, and I think I told you this when you first came in. Uh, what I noticed right away, first one uh, from the album I heard was, uh, was Mountain High, and I absolutely love it. It's it, I, a lot of these songs I think are like, and correct me if I'm wrong, they just feel to me like anthems yeah. to, your, to your hometown yeah. and your roots. Yeah, I guess that's, we're just, that, you know, when you I know, listen to it after, after Fergie and Brent, they put their magic on everything, that's what it reminds me of, man. It's like, did the, it? yeah. The, the, it's like a big proud thing, yes. man. Like that chant <laughs> thing. It's got that chant. Yeah, that anthem, man. It's, it is. You know, it just makes you want to drive in the car. You know? Yeah. Get up there. Yeah, man. And, Hang out. Yeah. And like home means so much to everybody. Everybody loves home. You know what I mean? And it's right. just, and, and not, and home don't really have to be a, a place, I guess. Home can be. State of mind, right? Different to everyone like that. So I think it's something everybody can relate to, man. I what, agree. A hundred percent. Yeah. Well, Donnie, guys, uh, can I take a break? And when we come back, would you play home for us? Yeah. I mean, not home. Mountain High. Mountain High. Mountain yeah, High, High. Yeah. yeah, that'd be uh, just awesome. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Songwriter Connection, connecting with music makers and hearing their songs and stories. Now back to the show with your host, Dave Linehan. We are with the Davison Brothers, just played uh, the Grand Old Opry last night. Uh, what a thrill. Um, and they're here live around the dining room table. The new album is Home is Where the Heart Is. 
This is an amazing song, Mountain High. Take it away, guys. <laughs> you guys <laughs> mountain high <laughs> anthem am i right yeah that's, <laughs> that's incredible <clears throat> and what other songs written in the lodge in south carolina right and when when that was done when you were done, when you were done with that did you think wow that's that's a hit we yeah. actually you wrote a feeling about it we you? actually wrote that one in a different place that was one of the early songs that we put on this uh project and we actually went to White and Durrett's, uh studio apartment in Nashville, mm-hmm. in uh, Midtown, and he's a co-writer on the show. Yeah, and Tyler Reeve, which is uh, just amazing hit maker, and uh, we walked in, and Drake White was in the room with White talking, and they stepped out on the porch and uh, was saying their byes, and then White took a phone call with his publisher or something, and there was an old banjo hanging on the wall. Mm-hmm. And I grabbed that banjo, just killing time, and just started that lick right there. And then when White walked in the room, it was like a half hour. That song was done. Wow. <laughs> it just come to life. It was one of them gifts from somewhere. You, know? you, you got to love when that happens. It yeah. doesn't happen. Yeah, a lot. that don't hardly ever happen. Hardly it ever was happens. one of them ones where you just keep. You don't even really write it down, man. You just we were singing that chorus, and then those oh. verses come through, and it's like, wow, man, that's the song. And, and do yourself a favor when you get to a computer or your phone. Um, look that video up and watch the video because the video is really amazing. Tell us a little bit about the shooting of that video. Is that all back at home? That was all yeah, done <clears throat> right at my house. And this gentleman right here with us, Brandon Hatton, 
He Brandon's brought a cam. The cameras. Uh, he's taking pictures and videos. So. Yep. He come up to the house and uh, we just shot right in my backyard around a fire. And uh, mm. I had an old barn up up the holler at one of the neighbor's house we used and went up on a mountain shot and that was it and yeah. we try to stay like that we we get you know offered all the time to come down to nashville and film these videos and it's just so much it feels so much more like home and in our space up there and we, we just take the camera crews to west virginia and film and uh, if you're going to do a song about home and about home yeah. high, yeah. I think you got to do it at home. Keep it right there in the backyard. Keep it right there in the backyard. <laughs> Speaking of videos, uh, we just, and I'm saying this, we always film in West Virginia, but we just broke our rule this week. We just come back from New Mexico shooting the new video <laughs> to the home song, which we're going to tie in, and we're going to shoot in West Virginia for the second half of it. But we had a good friend of ours. She's originally from West Virginia. She's a 70s and 80s TV icon. Uh, her name is Joyce DeWitt, and this is the first time we've talked about this Joyce in the DeWitt. public. Name is familiar. Nope. She played Janet on Three's Company. Three's Company. <laughs> yep. Come in, but, on our door. Okay. <laughs> but uh, wow, we we'd always want to do something with her collaboration, and she's really she stays out of the media, and she does a lot of theater and stuff. So we called her about two weeks ago and said, "Hey, we're shooting this video." You think you'd star in it for us? And she was all about it. So we uh, ended up flying out to her house in New Mexico and shot in the desert out there. It was just an amazing experience, this wow. little old town. And it was just amazing. And uh, she she went above and beyond. But That's great. But going back to that first video in the beginning uh, on this mountain high, who's the lady in the beginning of the, of the, of the That's That's the our mountain? cousin, Sherry. Cousin yeah. Sherry. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then I've also I had to ask you now – when you do, after the modulation and you go into the the chorus and you're going back, you know, man, you, somebody is chanting something in the background. What what is that? It's Chris. Yeah. What are you that, saying? That's a whole other. That's a yeah. whole other. I knew thing. there had to be a story behind yeah. it. Well, when we were when we were tracking the song, when we were over there with Fergie and Brent, we were we were getting Brent to sing some harmonies on stuff, and and wow. my my brother was like, "Come on, Brent, sing this part." And Brent said, "Well, I'll sing that part if you sing a part on Mountain High." So that's my brother, and he he don't hardly ever sing anything on. I never band. sing. That's he first never, time I ever he sing. never he never he never sings anything on the on the records or anything. Well, so. you do harmonies though. No, no I don't. No, you don't, no, even do no. don't. These these boys all do the harmonies. I've done a gang vocal one time. I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you sang a Guns and Roses song one time back in high school at the festival in our hometown. Oh. But it. But anyway. But anyway, we we done <laughs> mountain rock. <laughs> we done. Uh, we Brent talked him into doing that, so that's him in the background. We, we made a deal. Uh, the Brent's the guy where we're from, and it's where we'll die. Yeah. <laughs> Brent's singing on John Deere tractor at high <laughs> harmony, and I, he he got me. He's an old horse trader from <laughs> South Georgia. He said, "I'll tell you what." He said, "If if uh, you agree to do this part, I'm hearing in my head." He said, "I'll sing on John Deere tractor." So we made a handshake deal and stuck good to our deal. words. Very good deal. <laughs> <laughs> cool stories, you guys. It was, it was cool to have him okay. sing on one like that. Like yeah. I, I had my phone out filming him in there because I don't, I can't never get him to sing. I was like, Brent, man, you need to talk him into doing that more. But you know, it works. He can, so sing, well. he can sing better than any of us. He just won't do it over there. I mean, he's too focused on that guitar lick. <laughs> he's a good player. It works so well, though. It really did. It really did. <clears throat> It's got that Brent Cobb kind of feel. Yeah, I tell yeah, yeah, it does. Production man. style, it's, you know. Those yeah. guys are amazing. Like, they really, the thing, they, really they hear things that you don't hear, man. It's like, I'm like, man, how did you hear that? Where did that come from? How did you even think of doing that? <laughs> Producer's he, ears, they're, he, they're yeah. And, 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 and Brent's one of those guys, like, man, like he captures emotion in you, too. Like, he'll, he'll, he'll cut a... a Four word line down into like like man let's let's take let's just sing this word a little easier mm-hmm. push a little more on that word or hold that word out a little longer. just they got little tricks man they, they, they do just being a singer and a, a guy up there doing it every night like you don't think about things like that but it's amazing that's the little things I think that make those producers what they are man yeah. they've got that little they. And we're, they're, they're on the next level when it comes to that. They, they hear really things are. that I don't hear. And, and we're going to do as many takes as it takes yeah. to get that, <laughs> what I'm hearing in my ears. Right? Yeah, exactly. And you just have to trust them and just sit back, you know. But yeah. uh, what a great sounding, sonically, but this record is absolutely amazing. And, Thank you, man. Uh, yeah, Thank I hope you. folks will uh, listen and enjoy every track. Uh, this is your third record now? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, third one. And this was kind of different from, from the other two, huh? Yeah, it was just, uh, man, I feel like this record is something we've always wanted to do. This kind of, it's just, 
it's our journey, man. Mm-hmm. It's like where we come from and where we're at, where we've been and where we're going, man. I just feel it all. And like, and we the last couple records, I mean, they were awesome, and they Davison Brothers. But this record's not like the Jesse James and the Po Boys, Boys and that yeah. hold your drink in the air, that right. big high energy thing, man. This was kind of like. You Would boys, you, you boys, gonna make this record for you boys, man, and let and and bring your friends, man, and that. and let's do it like we sitting around picking and a grinning like we were raised, man, and like just I don't know, I feel like it come full circle, man, like Tim O'Brien and Vince and the McCurries and Ronnie Bowman and all them guys, Legends. they were my heroes, man. We yeah. we grew up doing all them big jam band festivals with those guys when we were first getting started. We get to open for them and yeah. maybe a couple festivals out of summer if the party was right they'd Vince would be like come on you Davidson brothers get up here and do a song with me and then tonight we got to do that growing up when when we were younger and everything and then if, to get to to be able to call those guys and say hey man we're we're gonna make this record for us man would you guys be a part of it and they they were all they all showed up man it was just like old Amazing. times and yeah. it's like it's like it almost come full circle back to back to where it all began would you say you man. found your true sound in this yeah man. this is it yeah that, that's what that's how I feel man in my heart like you said something before the broadcast that um, that blew me away about being authentic. And what was it? Was it, was it dad or like, Yeah, my dad. He's dad. always like, man, don't ever try to be anything else. He said, if they don't like you for who they for who you are, man, they're definitely not going to like you for trying to be something else or be somebody else, man. It's just, that's one of the best pieces of advice so, I have ever so, heard. Yeah, of, man. man I, we live by that. We go out yeah. there. That's what we do. That's who we are, man. All yeah. this music, I just feel like it's, it's honest to us. Mm-hmm. Like every lyric and every note in every one of these songs on this record, we've lived it. We breathe it, man. That's what we. That's 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 who we are. That's, I think it shows yep. when you listen to this record. It shows. Tell me about the Davison Brothers live experience. You talked about the jam bands and things. <laughs> when we go to see you in at a show, is it a jam band kind of a thing? It's, uh, it's I, government I, mule meets. I like to say uh, we do. We tour so hard. You do, don't you? We tour fifty to fifty one weeks a year sometimes, and we've been you know cutting back a little bit here and there, and. Uh, trying to spend more time writing and you know recording and focusing on that but we come up hard in west virginia there's no music venues up there really and it just it was a hard place to come out of and you know we we didn't come from any kind of money you know we was we was kind of just we had a rough upbringing you know Mm -hmm. we we didn't have a whole lot so we had this mindset of just having to work and outwork the next guy and just put your head down and work and get where you was going it was you know a slow process and we never give up it we just kept climbing the ladder you know i always looked at as long as we keep going up this ladder we're going to eventually get where we're going and uh Mm. it's just it's it's kind of it's worked for us we've 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 did all that and now we've we've kind of we're in a good place we got a tour bus now and get to do things a lot easier <laughs> not than, sleeping yeah, in the van yeah. no more <laughs> <laughs> that's gotta feel good <laughs> a lot easier but it, with that being said we've crossed a lot of paths just by being willing to do anything and we've kind of evolved our show to where it just about works anywhere you know we can go yeah. do these big bluegrass jam festivals we'll be the only band there with a drum kit and we still <laughs> you know like we, we we're allowed to be there we was managed by the Dale McCurry crew for years you know oh, and man. to fit in that little circle with a drummer is you know that's not yeah. an easy task to do with some of these traditional bluegrassers and they we don't want, like that drum kit no man. they don't <laughs> and for, for years the Opry would not allow a drum yeah, kit. yeah, yeah I and know and when they did they'd bring it down and they'd hide it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we've learned to kind of you know stay in our lane and just be respectful about what we do then you mm-hmm. know we go do those then we go do a top 40 country music festival some of the biggest festivals on the planet like the carolina country fest but wow. i like to tell people that uh you know sometimes we feel like in the country scene where we'll have them mouse dropping out there like they just played a 10 minute version of a song with a four minute guitar solo so <laughs> they're like what is this then i'm loving it then we go to the jam band and the bluegrass shows and we'll do a 
a verse, a chorus, and a guitar leading out in three minutes, and they're like, what's going on up here, you know? <laughs> so uh, we're sometimes too country rock for uh, the bluegrass jam guys and sometimes too jam bluegrass for the country shows. So we like to stay in the middle and try to, try to it, be we, our... What do we say about creating your own genre? What do we do? Exactly, yeah, right? man. Like, uh, uh, yeah. I really don't know the name of it. <laughs> it's I think the Mountain name Rock is brothers. about the best I've, yep. the, from what I've read, you know. Yep. But uh, absolutely amazing. That's that's good stuff. So where are you going to go? Hey, you got a tour uh, yeah. this summer? Yeah, where can yeah. we see you? And because we're all over the world. Yeah, we'll summer. be every and we are traveling the world this summer. Uh, we're going to be heading. We're doing some East Coast shows here in the next couple of weeks. The, the Carolinas and Maryland and Pennsylvania and Ohio. I think then we head out to Washington State wow. in early June for a festival then we come back and tour the eastern seaboard then we get to head to australia for a couple of weeks Ooh. in uh, august which we have a record you had a big over there. record uh, down there right? number yeah. one was it? yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, boys uh, we love oh, australia man the, yeah. the folks are wonderful just yeah. australia is a great music scene man and, yeah and it's almost like I, I feel like they relate to us because it, it reminds me a lot of home like australia reminds me a lot That's of west really? virginia man wow. just good hard working fun beer drinking music <laughs> uh, they it, i don't know man they it's i feel like they get it like our first time over there we got to invited to do the CMC Rocks Festival over there, and it's a big. It's like one of I think it may be their biggest festival over there, country music fest. And we took the stage and, and we kicked off with Po Boys, which was a big hit at the time there. And and we got going through the show. And my brother's like, "Let's do Country Roads," and I'm like, "No, nah, man!" I was whispering on stage, "Don't do that one, scrap. They ain't gonna know that." The John Denver 30, Country Roads. 30,000 Australians I'll singing bet. Country Roads back over there, man. I'll it bet. was crazy. They, mm-hmm. Just the way that they related to that song. Like, uh, but anyway, it was it's amazing. Australia's treated us wonderful. And we, we love it over there. Now, imagine a website so mm-hmm. people can see where they can get you uh, throughout the summer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Davisonbrothersband.com. And our, our two name S's. is two yeah. S's. D-A-V-I-S-S-O-N. Yeah. Awesome. Please check that out. Take us out with one, guys. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Speaking of uh, West Virginia, we're going to do a song about Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> this is called Eastern Kentucky.
this push and shove We can make some room for love and kill the pain So listen to me, brother Better hold on to each other Cause a year rolling by Like a high mountain train So let's get to living Stop taking, stop giving Brothers, and that was co written by Ferg, too, right? Yeah, 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 yes, Ferg, yeah, yeah. Fergie co wrote that one man. Awesome. with Ben good. Chapman, a very talented up and coming artist and songwriter. Hmm. We'll watch for him, yeah. Folks, the album is called Home is Where the Heart Is. The Davison Brothers, you're going to see them out there all summer. Uh, if they're near you, you'll want to come and see them. They're fantastic. Great guys, too. Thank you so much for taking time to be on the podcast. Thank Dave, you, Dave. thank you, buddy. Thank, thank you for uh, everything, yeah. man. This was wonderful. You, you make it easy, man. Uh, it's well, real. Thank you. Well, hopefully next time you come through, we can do it again. Let's all right? do it. All We're right. all about it, man. <laughs> thank you very much, guys. Thank you for listening to the Songwriter Connection podcast. Find us on social media at Songwriter Connection. Also, listen to Dave Lanahan's Nashville Connections radio show. It streams live every Friday morning on WOBL and WNOI. Look for us on Facebook and YouTube. See you next time on Songwriter Connection.